Hear me. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm delighted you're all here this evening. Welcome, welcome. A few announcements before we begin this evening. First of all, you should have received a little tea light, a little battery. Who didn't get one? My wife didn't get one. <laughs> so if someone can run that up for her. And you can take those home with you when you're done tonight. Um, song sheets are to assist you if you care to sing along with our resurrection singers, and we hope you will. Uh, that's why we have the song sheets with the lyrics on. Communion, we have the pre-filled little cups. Several reasons for that is, first of all, it saves time. And secondly, with flu season and COVID coming back around, uh, we're very conscious and sensitive to that. Also, uh, as we greet one another, do so with some um, caution. Do a wave, a high five, a peace sign, a little happy dance, whatever you need to do to greet one another at the appropriate time. Um, we have no Christmas Day worship services this year. We invite you to be with your families rather than coming out. Also, the other thing we have known for years that when we've offered Christmas Day services, no one comes. So it's, that's perfectly a good reason to do that. I want to thank all the many people, a host of folks, who made this evening and this evening's services possible, and they've labored to do that. So thank you to all those folks. I want to thank especially the Resurrection Band, and when they're all standing here, it's going to be Jerry, Nathan, Sarah, and Josh. Be sure to thank them after the service for their music. With that, I think we're ready to begin. Come on up. All right, you guys are really quiet. Merry Christmas. All right, why don't you go ahead and stand and let's get ready to worship this Christmas Eve together. Star of wonder, star of might, star with royal beauty bright, Westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. From the beginning, the Father had a magnificent plan. Revealed through the law and the prophets To fulfill the redemption of man You spoke after centuries of silence In the midst of a still starry night And Emmanuel came down among us And the Father said, let there be light Let there be light Hope for the hopeless was born on the line. When God sent his son and said, let there be light. People who walked in great darkness gathered from near and afar. Shepherds with flocks in their keeping Three kings who follow a star Together the poor and the richest Witness that Bethlehem night And the sky full of angels announcing The birth of a glorious light Let there be light Let it shine bright Piercing the darkness with dazzling light Hope for the hopeless was born on the line When God sent his son and said, let there be light We who are his have this calling To praise him and make his name known 
One day the presence of Jesus shines in every heart and every home shines in our home. Let there be light, let it shine bright, piercing the darkness with dazzling light. Hope for the hopeless was born. Not for us, but for Jesus, right? That's who we're here to celebrate. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 9. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you with a joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon its shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter, I invite you to rise as you may be able. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for, see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. When I did uh, Christmas Eve for you two years ago, I, I took out a couple just words to talk about the birth of Jesus and then it was, there was no room for them in the end. Anyone remember that two years ago? A couple of you. If not, I'm going to repeat it again. So, <laughs> Tonight, I'm actually going to, the, the emphasis is while they were there. Growing up, I always imagined the birth of Jesus, Joseph and Mary traveling from um, Nazareth to Bethlehem. By the way, it's about 50 miles. It's like from here to what? Orlando Airport, at least Orlando on foot. Can you imagine that? So just traveling there to do that. I imagined them traveling and then getting there right at the time of the birth and they're knocking on the door of the inn and the innkeeper says, sorry, we're a fool. 
Is this a story about the inn being full? And the answer is no. I'll get back to the no part here in a minute. While they were there, however, is my topic for tonight. They were there before it was time for her to be delivered. Do you remember the movie, While They Were Sleeping? While You Were Sleeping? A chick flick. All right, so it's, uh, what, Tom Hanks, and I forget who else. Um, all the things that are happening while people are sleeping at night. A time period has gone by while they were sleeping. Things happen in our life. There are tipping points of life. There are tipping points for people of faith. Just imagine a tipping point for Abraham. God said, I will make you the father of many nations. Go to the place where I will show you. A tipping point. That happened while he was doing his normal stuff. Same thing for Isaac and Jacob and Joseph. Imagine Joseph in captivity in Egypt. He, he, was, he was a slave. He was in prison. While he was in prison, there was a dream that was told to Pharaoh. And he became then the second most powerful person in Egypt. While he was in, so you begin to see there's this time passage that is behind the story of the birth of Jesus. Um, people of faith, King David, David, the youngest of his brothers, you know, he was ruddy, he was small, he was sort of spindly, he was not quite a man, but still a boy. And the prophet said, that's going to be the one who will be king in Israel while he was a shepherd. You begin to see that while part begins to see in the middle of life, God is making plans for you, made plans for people that we remember in the scriptures. While they were there, Mary and Joseph, God was making plans for the birth to be remembered for us in the story of the gospel we had today. While they were there, probably residing at the inn, by the way, while they were there, God was making plans with the innkeeper. God was making plans for the shepherds. God was making plans for others surrounding that event. So why does the scripture say there was no room for them? And the answer is for the Hebrews they had laws and ordinances and statutes. Anyone remember how many there are? Test, test. 613. All taken from the Ten Commandments to detail what it meant to live and to breathe and be distinctive as people of faith of the covenant. Those had to do with dietary laws and sanitary laws. If you entered a house, you had to wash your hands, take off your shoes and wash your feet, wash your face and your hair, anointing, cleanliness. Same thing is true for a woman in childbirth. Anyone who came in contact with a woman giving birth or any of the normal fluids that are around and that would be ritually unclean for seven days. And so they probably knew that they couldn't remain in the inn and so there was no place for them in the inn. And the innkeeper said, ah, I have a place for you. The second most secure and clean place at that time would have been what? It would have been the stable where they kept valuable property, okay? The horses, the donkeys, the beasts of burden, cattle, and others. There's a place for you. They went to the inn. That wasn't a demeaning thing. It was simply the next best thing that they could do. While they were there, or while we are here, God is making plans for you and for me. God is working in your life for something special. I often say every day and every way, God is there for you if you're paying attention. We call those God winks. I call them holy coincidences. You meet somebody, you see something, something happens to you that's wonderful and glorious, that's a God wink. God is preparing something while you are in your regular life. And God's not done with any of us yet either. Think about that. Even as the shepherds came and were amazed, by the way, they were watching sheep. 
Shepherds, do you know this story about shepherds? If you couldn't get a job doing anything else, you were a shepherd. No education, you know, if something got missing from your backyard, a shepherd took it, all right? They were not well known for being honest or trustworthy. It was a dirty, smelly job. They had no place to be. They had out in the middle of nowhere. So an angel appears and said, I bring you good news of great joy for to you, by that it's a plural you, you all, is born this day in the city of David a Savior, the Messiah, who is Christ the Lord. And it's maybe unusual or maybe not, but it is a sign, something rather unusual, and you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. God was preparing even the lowest of the low to hear that message. Not the highest of the high, but starting with the ones who need to hear. The poor have good news proclaimed to them. You know, the lame walk, the blind see, the deaf hear. You're going to hear that in a song here in a little bit. You know, the people in prison have good news of the kingdom preached to them. Those are signs of the Messiah. And so, while the shepherds were in the field, God was preparing them. And they responded, and they said they quickly, they went with haste. Well, that meant they ran as fast as they could go to see what was going on. And they saw Mary and Joseph, and they saw this baby wrapped in bands of cloth in a cattle manger. A manger, if you didn't get it, a feed trough. And they rejoiced, and they told Mary, And not only having a baby, but God is still preparing Mary to get this sense of what does all this mean. Mary took all these words from the shepherds and pondered them because she needed to have that assurance that the child that was born to her was truly the Christ, the Messiah, the one to bring everyone salvation. The other thing that's interesting, you remember the angel was preparing Joseph? He came to Joseph in a dream. That was last week. And he said, don't be afraid, Joseph, to take Mary as your, as your wife for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and he will save his people from their sins. The name Jesus is actually the Greek word of Yeshua, Joshua, the one who saves. Even the name, God's preparing the people to understand that for those of us who walk in the darkness of this life, we get sick, we old, we die. Sin and death go hand in hand. Why do people die? The Bible says sin, separation from God. But this Jesus will be the bridge by which that curse, the curse of Adam, will be erased and we will have hope. God's preparing you while we are here. God is still working in your life and in mine to bring you light and to bring you salvation and for all people. God's grace and be with you tonight. Amen. Chin.
inspire your heavenly song. Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O Lord, your infinite love is born to us this night. With choirs of angels of the church proclaims the good news. Send us out as messengers of the hope that has come to all people. God of grace, hear our prayer. You are pleased to dwell with your creatures, and the whole earth sings for joy. Renew the splendor of creation from the smallest cell to the widest galaxies. Guide us to be wise stewards of your gifts for the sake of the generations to come. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your authority is over the nations. Break the rod of oppression in every land and free all people from fear. Bring peace where there is war, compassion where there is suffering, and healing where there is disease. God of grace, hear our prayer. You cherish those most vulnerable, protect infants and children, bless those who care for them, watch over women giving birth, attend the dying, relieve any who are in pain, shelter the refugee families and those who have no home. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your loving kindness embraces everyone in need, Help any for whom this season is lonely or joyless. Comfort those among us or unknown to us who are experiencing uh, distress of body or mind, missing loved ones or grieving. God of grace, hear our prayer. You welcome those who have died into the joyous light of glory. We give thanks for the saints of every time and place who have praised you with lives of faith and humility inspire us by their example, to love you by serving others. God of grace, hear our prayer. Pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray, with the mercy of our Lord. Amen. Time to share the peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Signs of God, peace, waves, high fives, elbow bumps,
Did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that moved to live will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm a storm with his hand? Did you know Invite you to rise as you may be able. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth flood, flood from the earth, food for the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way that all may know your care and prepare us now for the feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise.
After giving thanks, you broke it and said, This is my body, broken for you. And as you eat it, remember me. This is my body, broken for you. And as you eat it, remember me. On the night you were betrayed, you held the cup. After giving thanks, you lifted it up. This is my blood poured out for you. And as you drink it, remember me. This is my blood poured out for you. And as you drink it, remember me. So we thank you for the wine and for the bread. For we see the life you gave and the blood you shed. And we remember your wondrous love. You gave your body, you shed your blood. And we remember your wondrous love. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come now, taste and see that the Lord is good. Carefully, those of you who have your prepared containers of bread and wine, or remove the top from the wafer part. We'll do this together. The body of Christ broken for you. Carefully with the top of the wine. The blood of Christ shed for you. Ushers will be coming forward here shortly to pick up your empty cups, so there's no need for drips or spills. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthened you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let me adjust. They're going to pick up your cups here. We'll just take a little pause here so you don't have to worry about what to do with your empty containers.
you can flick on your, you can put on your tea lights if you care to. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and to them which sat in the region of the shadow of death, light has sprung up. Then spoke Jesus again to them, saying, I am the light of the world. They that follow me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid.
Go in peace this holy night to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go, go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go, go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept the watching, or silent. Merry Christmas. 